Hey guys, and welcome to our brand new Design Basics video series. This series is brought to you by me, Eric Vasquez, and DesignCuts.com. Now in these videos, we're seeking to help demystify and explain some of the fundamentals and things that you need to help step up your design game. Now these are the kind of things, the concepts that they don't always teach you in school or at you know any kind of design course and stuff like that, but I guarantee that implementing and understanding these kind of tips is going to help you elevate your work to the next level. So in this lesson, we're going to be talking a little bit about leading the viewer's eye. And the best way to do that really is to create a sense of importance and what you would call a visual hierarchy in order to establish what are the most important elements and how can we control those things to get the viewer to look where we want them to. So to demonstrate this lesson, I'll be working today in Adobe Illustrator. So let's jump on over and begin. Now, in this lesson here, as I've said, I'll be using a couple of elements from some of the older design bundles. And in this one in particular is from the Eclectic Vintage Design Library, and it's part of the Vintage Ephemera pack. So you guys don't necessarily need to have um, these you know, illustrations. I'm just going to be using them today in order to demonstrate the idea. But before we get in, I just wanted to show you guys a quick example. Now, I'm going to open up this image. This was from an older design tutorial that I did. And I kind of found it just digging through the archives, you know, looking back at some of the work that I've done in the past with design cuts. Um, some of you guys may have even, you know, seen this one or remember it from before. Um, but the idea is when you look at this, you kind of, you know, think about where your eye goes. It's going to the package in the center first because it's big, it's bright, it's colorful. But you also have to consider things like the text and the contrast that's working here. You know, the bright colors are popping out. The size of the text is making it stand out. And there's kind of a very nice visual flow and balance to this. So using that same idea and that same principle, I'm just going to grab a few of these illustrations here to bring over into a separate artboard just so that I can kind of show you guys a better way to see this in action. So I'm just going to grab these few things, come over here in Illustrator and paste them. And let's take a look here. If I have this bridge, right? and Let's say that I want to add some text to it. So I can just type out headline. All right, and I'll move these two things over to the side here just so you guys aren't getting distracted by them. But if you just look at these two things together on the screen, you know, what jumps out at you first? It's obviously going to be the bridge. You know, maybe the headline, you'll notice it, but this bridge is really commanding all the attention. And that's because of the scale and the relationship between these two elements. If I suddenly make that bridge really small and this headline really big, then you know it's going to change things a little bit. All right, so let me just come here really quickly to change the typeface to something else. All right, maybe something just a little bit cleaner and nice looking like that. Now we're starting to get a little bit more interesting, right? So if we come in here and I can say, this is your body text where you can talk all about your business. All right, now, if I bring this into my composition here, or my design, right, make it a little bit smaller, it's still a little bit distracting, and you're not quite sure what to read first, right? Because now you've got both of these things in all caps, they're the same weight, the same color, and they're pretty close to each other. So in order to help establish this visual hierarchy, and you know, get your reader or viewer to be able to read this in a kind of natural and more comfortable way, you would want to first make sure that you're maybe using all you know, upper and lower case body text where you can talk all about your business. All right? Suddenly that becomes a little bit easier to read, especially when I scale that down. Okay, so now there's a little bit more of a flow here. All right, but again, now if I can play around with the size of this bridge a little bit, maybe we want to make the headline heavier, like a bold font. All right, now we're starting to see how you can lead the viewer's eye, as opposed to something like before, where, you know, if all these elements are the same size, the same weight, you know, it gets to be a little bit, you know, hard to determine where you're supposed to look, right? Especially if I had all caps like I did originally. So you can see the difference between these two. Okay, so that's just one example of how you can lead the viewer's eye. Now let me maybe grab 
this Colosseum over here. And I'll give you guys another quick example. If I just add a color here, maybe I'll make it, you know, red, a nice bright red color like that. Maybe that's a little bit too intense. I'll make it a little darker. And now I'm going to, you know, fill up this space here. Okay. Now if I grab the text and I suddenly change it to white, we've all of a sudden got a lot more contrast here and your eye just naturally is going to go to that headline first. So not only is scale a great way to lead the viewer's eye and to establish a sense of visual hierarchy, but you can also do that using color and using contrast as you're seeing here. But if both of these things were white, again, it becomes a little bit, you know, these two elements are kind of competing together and it becomes a little bit more difficult to discern which element is of more importance. All right. So Contrast is another great way to do it aside from scale and color. So those are just a few, you know, little tricks here that you guys can use. And lastly, if you're working on a design that has, you know, several elements, let's say like, you know, what we started with before, where you've got the headline, you've got, you know, some text over here on top on the side, you know, you can start to play around with the size of these things in relationship to each other to create some pretty interesting layouts and all to, you know, help your viewer determine which information they're supposed to read first. Now, just because these pieces of text are in a certain order, you can see it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to read them in that order. So what I mean by that is, yes, I see the headline first, but now my eye kind of comes down here to the text below the bike, and then it comes to this smaller text. Okay, so you can see how that kind of works. And these are some really great tricks and tips to help you guys, you know, kind of determine the relationships um, between things like the size and the scale of the elements in all of your design projects. And I guarantee you guys that once you begin to understand this and implement it in your work, that you're going to see amazing results. You're going to see your work improve and you're going to start to look at things a little bit differently. Um, I know from personal experience, when I look at you know, an ad on the subway or the side of a bus, you know, I'm always kind of, you know, scrutinizing and examining these things a little bit uh, to pick them apart and see if I can find, you know, things that work really well and maybe things that I would have done differently or things that could have been done a little bit better. So hopefully that kind of explains to you guys a little bit how to lead the viewer's eye in design. And hopefully it's been a useful uh, little tip and trick for you guys you know, start implementing this in your in your work now. There's no reason not to. Um, but again, I hope that you guys have found this tip useful. This is our Design Basics video series brought to you by Eric Vasquez and DesignCuts.com. Thank you guys for watching, and be sure to let us know if there's any other topics or basic videos that you would like to see us cover. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.